Money FM 89.3, best of weekends. <laughs> and Jane Iyer is here to tell us about it, the founder of Jane's Tours. Jane, welcome to Weekend Mornings on Money FM. Are you going to scare us today? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to petrify you, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Jane, you ran this tour, I, I believe, for the first time last night, right? The Halloween on the Hill and All Souls Day at Dempsey. Is that is that correct? That's absolutely correct. Spot on. Um, we've been thinking about doing spooky Singapore tours for a long time, um, but I really wanted to make sure that we were going to do it in um, in, a, in a good way, you know. So it wouldn't it would be scary, but at the same time it would be educational. And I think we achieved that balance last night. It was exhausting. I have to be honest with you. I got home about one a.m. <laughs> <laughs> oh my we, gosh! We, yeah, we went over into the midnight hour, you know, and into Halloween itself, which was rather fun. Um, so. So, yeah, it was pretty interesting. I'm glad we don't have another one tonight. We have a rest tonight and another one tomorrow night. <laughs> you know, one of our, but, one, uh, of our good. one of our fans on Facebook, uh, Angel Sada, is with us, and she says she enjoys the adrenaline rush of a good scare. So, did anybody get scared last night? Did you have any apparitions or any uh, Pontianics uh, cross your path? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there were a lot of stories swapped, a lot of stories. And interestingly enough, one of the gentlemen who was on the tour yeah. told us about how he had just seen a Pontianic in Sentosa last week. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was absolutely convinced. And he talked about it. He said, this is what she looked like. And I didn't really know what it was. In fact, I didn't know it was a Pontianac, but I was showing pictures of Pontianacs on the tour. And he went, that's it. That's the one. That's what I saw last week in Sentosa. <laughs> Oh, well, that was quite scary. And of course, Sentosa is one of the places around Singapore that is reportedly haunted. Uh, a lot, you know, much of it based on on the war and the Japanese uh, occupation there. Yeah, uh, Pulau Blakang Mati, yeah. Island Behind the Dead. Yeah. Uh, and, exactly. Uh, well, Jane, I mean, this is the thing. The theme of our show today is obviously Halloween, and there's a common theme running through that, which is. Many, many Singaporeans do believe in Pontianaks, uh, Hantu in Malay, uh, you know, and so on. It, it transcends all cultures, all races in this part of the world. So I'm guessing that your tours have been rather popular. They have been extremely popular. It's interesting. We had a maximum of 20 people last night, two guides, subgroups, socially distant and all that good stuff. And uh, it sold out completely. And the same for tomorrow night. It sold out as well. And, and based on that, the feedback you got from the, the guests on your tour, what did you find? I mean, what is it about this, uh, the supernatural, the ghost ghouls? What is it about that that is so appealing, you think, to Singaporeans? <laughs> Well, you know, I think everybody the world over is sort of fascinated and yet a little bit sort of frightened of what's beyond death, right? Mm. It, it's sort of, it's a, it's a human condition to a large extent. And I think the more religious the country is, the more they believe in the afterlife, which is understandable because it goes together, right? And in fact, one of the statistics I found in preparation for this tour is that 68% of Singaporeans believe in ghosts, which mm. I thought was an incredible statistic. It's about double that in the US and about three times that in Europe. Wow. So it's a very, very strong belief in ghosts and, 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 and the afterlife. Um, so I think a lot of it stems from uh, being a religious country, which we are. We have many, many different religions. And also of that confluence of all these different cultures here as you were saying with your last guests you know we've got the chinese traditions the malay the indian eurasian all coming together into this sort of hotbed of, of activity if mm. you like so i think it's two things to say there's generally it's a human condition to be interested fascinated worried sometimes about what's beyond the veil <laughs> and secondly here in singapore you know we've got this particular sort of confluence of, of influences but yeah no definitely we've been asked for a long long time to run these and we've been resisting for a bit because i didn't want to make it just like a boo thing you know i wanted to actually um add some educational element to it because that's what we're all about as you guys know um but mm -hmm. last night was a mix we we started actually with the history of um dempsey area which just has a big military history right. and obviously a lot of activity there as a result um and I, i'm working with a clairvoyant partner and she said yeah i, I i'm going to pick a spot in dempsey where definitely there are things going on in fact she had been there yesterday morning at dawn to check it out and made contact with some you know 
know, somebody from beyond the veil. Um, in the evening, we had everybody sitting around trying to do likewise with various different uh, tools at their disposal, um, divining rods and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, there was there was some contact, but it wasn't too scary. I have to be honest with you. We were trying to do it in a sort of, you know, empathetic way, being nice to the spirits. How and, fun, uh, Jane. That is yeah, just fun. It was, it was yeah. a lot of fun. It was really great, actually. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> but you make a fascinating point there, Jane, about percentages. What, what did you say? It was 68, 69%? 68%. 68% believe in yeah. ghosts. Yeah, yeah it, it's a fascinating insight to me because, I mean, I, I remember just recently uh, I went up to a hotel in uh, in Genting, uh, Gunting in, in, in Malaysia, and when I said the particular hotel, a friend of mine, very you know intelligent, erudite friend, a uh, Singaporean friend, she said... Uh, no, you can't stay at that hotel. It's haunted. <laughs> and I laughed, ha, 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 thinking she was joking. No, no, I'm, I'm deadly serious. You cannot stay at that hotel. Singaporeans will never stay at that particular hotel. It's haunted. And it was one of those near a, a gambling institution, shall we say. And I think there'd been some incidents there with gamblers in the past. And, and she said, no, you do not stay there. There have been apparitions. There have been sightings. There have been. And I said, are you sure these just weren't drunk gamblers <laughs> that you saw wandering around? But true enough, true enough, she gave me, I won't go into here, but she gave me concrete reasons why she mm. believed this particular hotel was haunted. So I was going to ask you, what is it about the Dempsey area that attracts so many people who believe that it's haunted? Well, I think, you know, as I say, we're in, in deciding where we should do tours we've got a whole variety of different places and in fact we do intend to run more spooky singapore tours in different parts of the island going forward but we started in dempsey largely because there is an incredible military history there uh you've got the old dempsey hospital the old military hospital in lowen road so obviously you're going to have some natural deaths going on in a military hospital sure. um, but you've also got the sepoy mutiny of uh, 1915 which um resulted in 14 people being killed in a half an hour which is which is pretty good going right uh and and so, obviously, again, we believe that there are some, there is some kind of presence there as a result of that very violent and very quick and sudden death. Um, and as I say, my, my partner, my clairvoyant partner, has actually made contact with a particular gentleman buried um, behind the hospital by the name of Frank. No. Uh, we can't find out much about more about him at the moment, but she has uh, she has made contact with him. And so there is a presence there and she feels it because she's clairvoyant. I'm not. She feels it. And uh, so that's why we decided on on Dempsey um, mm. because of that history. Yeah. Very interesting. Jane, do you, uh, I, the other day I saw you had a picture of a Pontianic. Do you have it with you today? Can you show it? I, I most certainly do. I was going to this in advance. If you're so not already on up. Facebook Live, get to the Money <laughs> FM Facebook page right now. Who says we don't have exclusives? We're going to show you a photograph of a Pontianic. Wow, look at that. What's yeah. that about, Jane? Oh, oh, hang about. Let me just put her a little bit more straight. Sorry. Jane um, is showing us well, on the screen a picture of a Pontianic. Exactly. Not taken by myself, I'm delighted to say, nor indeed by the gentleman who saw the Pontianac in Sintosa last week, nor indeed by my Malay driver who reckons he was absolutely had a Pontianac in the back of his cab in Mount Pleasant Road a couple of years ago. But there you go. But we don't have photographic evidence of all of those, but that is a photo. Well, a Pontianac, as I'm sure all Singaporeans listening in and possibly others as well, mm. will know that she is basically the ghost of a, a lady who has died in pregnancy or in childbirth. And therefore, she is coming back particularly to take revenge on men, who she blames for her predicament, mm. understandably. Um, and uh, she tends to look just like the photo. She's wearing a white dress or shroud. She's got very long black hair. And uh, she hangs out under banana trees quite often. So uh, watch out, guys. Be careful, seriously, uh, about Mount Pleasant Road and the rest. <laughs> Don't stop at dusk in particular and anywhere near a banana tree. Well, we had <laughs> fascinating insight, didn't we, Glenn, from our previous authors mm. who, who said along those lines that in, uh, in patriarchal societies, which predominantly Asia tends to be, the theme, the spectre, if you like, of the Pontianak coming back to wreak retribution against these patriarchal societies seems to be quite a strong theme, Jane. Yeah. I mean, you can, it's, it's understandable. In fact, to some extent, you know, it's, it's worldwide. Again, you mm -hmm. get these kind of stories, you know, that you've got Dracula and all those kind of things. And there's a there's a whole lot of other sort of uh, influences going on, I think, in these stories. But, but the Malay culture in particular has many of these kinds of uh, of, of uh, creatures, should we say, Pontianak being obviously one of them, the, the best known one, I think, for sure. And actually, I found it very interesting. And I know, Glenn, you saw have seen this already. But just to um, remind you... 
Uh, this is a film movie oops, that came out last year called Revenge of the Pontianak by Glenn Gui, the very well-known director. And uh, I happened to sit right next to, or in fact behind, the lady who played the part of the Pontianak in the film at the uh, showing. Yeah, that was fine. She was perfectly fine. But she told, yeah, I know, I know, nothing spooky there. But she told me afterwards when we were chatting, she said, you know, when we were making this movie up in Perak in Malaysia, we were being watched the whole time by a Pontianak. Oh, wow. Well, it, I mean, it's that kind of day, Jane. In a previous segment, we were being watched by a haunted dog. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. What was that? <laughs> no, we, we, we were talking to an author, and this spectre kept appearing in the, in a window behind her that we couldn't see the outline of clearly. It turned out to be her dog. But as oh. we weren't aware of it, it was quite terrifying. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, this Pontianak theme, it is very mm. popular. I mean, you mentioned Changi Hospital there, and I'm sure in your research, what, what were some of the places that, that caught your eye in Singapore that tends to be areas that Singaporeans believe may or may not be haunted? Well, you know, I think anywhere where there's been a cemetery, for obvious reasons. Oh, here we go. Spooky music again. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ooh. We just um, had to give that to you, Dean. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Can, You're the only one who gets it. You're the only one who gets it. I need him on my phone. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's probably like, what, a half a dozen, uh, half a dozen well-known um, actually, places, right? Yeah, there, there, there are more, actually. There are, there are a lot. So anywhere there's been a cemetery, obviously, that for mm. obvious reasons. Sure. Um, people also tend to be very leery about the areas where there are old houses. So, for example, mm. some of the old black and white estates. So Alexandra Park, for example, um, because it can be a bit creepy at night time in there. You know, it's dark and a lot of trees and so forth. Like, uh, somebody last night was saying that they live in Case Yang Road and that there are yeah. also taxi drivers not very keen on going up there. So um, there's a whole variety of places like that. But, yeah, I mean, we've mentioned Sentosa or Already. We've mentioned Mount Pleasant Road. Uh, Bucket Brown Cemetery is obviously a still, well, it's not a cemetery anymore in, in the sense that nobody's buried there, but that's definitely Fort Canning, um, because, of course, you know, there's all the beliefs around the old Malay kings still coming back. In fact, the Japanese were very leery about Fort Canning when they were here during the war, even. And uh, so there, there were many, many different places all around the island. And also one that I always remember, I think it was the first, one of the first I saw when I first arrived in Singapore was the German girl shrine at Pulau uh, Ubin, which is, of course, yeah. uh, well, you know the story better than I, but maybe you could just explain that one, because that is always a popular place for not only superstitious people, but people who want some good fortune as well. Yes, yes, a lot of gamblers go there, yeah. going back to the gambler theme. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Possibly before they go up to Genting Highlands. I don't know. Anyway, um, the, yeah, no, the, the, the German girl shrine is one of these strange anachronisms, really. And we go there quite frequently on our Ubin uh, trails. But uh, it all uh, boils down to the story of a young German lass who very sadly lost her life during World War I um, when the authorities came to arrest her German parents. And she ran away and reputedly fell into a quarry and, and died. And because mm. she was very well loved by the local people, they decided to set up a shrine to her. And in the early days, it has been replaced now, but in the early days, she was represented, as I'm sure you know, Neil, by a Barbie doll. Yeah, I did know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quite bizarre, really, when you think about it. But anyway, um, I guess they she was sort of blonde Barbie. That sort of looked German. <laughs> so, yes. Um, and they've replaced it now. And it's like almost like a little Austrian chalet looking uh, temple, if you like, now to or shrine to her these days. But it is very interesting and, and, and very bizarre. Yeah, my mm. first memory of that a Singaporean friend took me and there were a series of small dolls there. And and he told me that obviously people had gone and, and left them there. And I said, "Well, that's that's so profound, you know. They're and so sweet and poignant. They're they're, they're giving a, an mm. offering to a, a German girl they never knew." And he said, "Please, I knew. They just want to gamble. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just want good luck on 4D. That's all it is." That's funny. There you go. You know, Jane. There there are um, there are places like Changi Hospital that we can't get into. You can go on the outside of, uh, for example, and other places like that. I've heard many stories from taxi drivers over the year who's, who claim between sometime between twelve and twelve thirty in the morning they will see apparitions running across the the East Coast Parkway yeah, I've heard that. as they are driving toward the airport or back from the airport uh, the soldiers soldiers from World War II uh, headed to yeah. the headed to the ocean I mean there's there's so many of these Suk-ching stories Ching is another one I've heard people uh, uh, around the Pongal beaches they claim sure, they've heard yeah. and seen certain things Suk Ching is another Absolutely. one Have, uh, is yeah. uh, and I know you, you're just doing the tours. You're not a paranormal expert. But do we have any evidence? Has there ever been any evidence that you've been able to uncover that that 
you know, demonstrable proof that any of these things have ever happened, or are they all just ghost stories to us? <laughs> oh well, one person's story is another person's heart and fact. Uh, I, guess fact right? I guess it is. I guess it is. But I think the answer is that, that certain things have been captured on on video and on photo, which. Of course, the cynics would explain as being some technical glitch. In fact, one of my team just sent me uh, yesterday a photograph of her at a birthday party on the East Coast a couple of years ago. And uh, her helper, in actual fact, is holding a birthday cake. And in part of the photo on the left-hand side, there is a pretty clear image of... Actually, it looks, it looks awfully like the Pontianac, to be frank, but because um, she's got long, dark hair and she's wearing a sort of light-coloured dress. And the rumour has it that she was drowned in the in the waters uh, of, of the East Coast, hmm. uh, near East Coast Park. Um, now, I, I, her, my, my, uh, my colleague's her husband is a photographer, and he has looked at it, and he says he cannot see any way in which that could have been faked. Hmm. So, you know, maybe, maybe it is true. I, I also have been, spoken to quite a few people who live in old houses here, particularly black and white houses, hmm. who have all kinds of stories about, yeah, you know, very sensible, normal people uh, up in Sambo, Wang, for example, saying, yeah, you know, I was filming my child playing with a balloon one day and the balloon popped and this huge orb of light just flew across the room and I videoed it. I said, oh, well, show me the video. Oh, I can't. Lost it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, got, got, got erased, which is a pity. But um, but I'm sure that if, if for all the different people who are, who are listening in today and, and people in Singapore generally will have, there must be evidence. And certainly the paranormal yeah. investigators do find evidence um, of, of paranormal activity. Mm. Well, Jane, keep, keeping this theme going, we have discussions on this show every week about all kinds of serious social economic political issues. And surprisingly, Halloween has triggered by far most of the comments, <laughs> as you would expect. We've got an AB, our friend AB Terence has said Jane should add some of the universal Halloween horror night elements to her tour. There would be tons of actors available for hire. There's something to think about. Arthur Liu has said, Thanks, Arthur. Arthur has said, Who needs Halloween? We have Neil. Thanks for that, Arthur. <laughs> and lots of people said yes, the cemeteries. Uh, our, our good friend N.C. Vasoti, uh, Ottomander said, the folks who made more moving gods had to appease the spirit after an unfortunate remark by an actor. Mm. So it just ties in with that theme, Jane, uh, doesn't it, that we, t- we, we spoke about at the start of this, that we live in a country that tends to be, I wouldn't superstitious, or certainly a strong belief in the other yes. world, the supernatural. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. No, no, for sure. And and I think it's interesting, you know, you were talking earlier on about how Halloween has become so big here mm. in Singapore. But honestly, as, as you rightly said, and I've been here over 20 years as well, it really wasn't that big. And you, as a fellow Brit to me, uh, Neil, you will also remember the days, the old days of Halloween in our country, where people did things like apple bobbing and told ghost stories. Mm. It was very different to the trick and treat, uh, trick or treat um, tradition that came from the US, which incidentally, I've also lived in the US, so I've experienced it. Um, um, on the 31st, it's absolutely crazy. We lived in Brooklyn where, you, you know, we, we sort of decorated our stoop and all the rest of it. And thousands of children came and got, <laughs> got, got candy. Incidentally, on the commercial side, do you know that a third of the candy sold in the U.S. is sold this weekend? Is that it's right? quite extraordinary. Wow. Yes, absolutely. It's quite incredible. So it's, uh, you know, it's a, for, from a commercial point of view, it's definitely a big hit. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think that uh, it, it's interesting. One of the things we did last night was to give the history of Halloween and where these various traditions come from so a little bit of education there again and you know all balls down that did come from the british isles originally and then the romans took it and brought it to italy and then from there it went throughout christendom and that's where basically where it all comes from oh, yeah. so it's sort of yeah it's interesting and it was at one point in february and then it moved back to the uh, end of october to tie in with all saints day so anyway, that's a very, very brief thing. But but yeah, no, I, I, I think it's really become, it's obviously become a big commercial thing here. Yeah. It's become uh, a big thing for the candy sellers clearly sure. all around the world, sure. uh, particularly in the US. But I think at the same time, yeah, there's a, if we look behind that superficial stuff, there's some really interesting stories. Jane, uh, always a pleasure to have you on with us. And uh, so happy to hear about your, um, your, your new tour, the Halloween on the hill on All Souls Day at Dempsey. And I hope that's a great success for you tomorrow night as it was last night. And and in the future, when I, I assume you'll be carrying on with this even throughout the year. Is that correct? 
We will. We will. We're planning to do spooky Singapore tours all around the island. We're using it with, with, in partnership with the Clairvoyance, which is wonderful because she's just great. And uh, yeah, so uh, watch this space. <laughs> and all can be found at janestours.sg. Uh, in the meantime, uh, happy Halloween to you. Enjoy your uh, your spooky day today and, and enjoy your tour tomorrow night. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Jane. Thank you very much, guys.